Hello viewers, my name is Partha Varanashi and along with the Discover Agriculture and Varanashi Organic Farms, we would love to discuss a little bit about regenerative uh, paddy cultivation uh, that we've been following for the last 25 years here at uh, Varanashi Farms. We also use system of rice inten intensification or SRI method to get a high yield um, with rice using natural processes. So the, the principles of regenerative uh, paddy cultivation, one of the main important point in here is crop rotation. So basically not growing paddy um, throughout the year, but we break it down. So we use the monsoon period um, to grow paddy, so three to four months, uh, one, one cycle. And after that, we use the same field. We grow um, lentils such as green gram and black gram. And post that, we leave the pad, uh, paddy fields or the, the same fields for the green manure to take over, such as Gliricidia, uh, we have Mimosa purica, we have, we have Gale of Wind, uh, which is also a medicinal plant. So all these different kinds of plants just take over and they grow for about four months in the summer. And we also grow vegetables um, during different kinds of vegetables in the summer as well. And this green manure is plowed back into the ground uh, during monsoon when the next season for the paddy comes in and that's how uh, the nutrient is pushed back into the soil so that we do not have to use any chemical fertilizers uh, in the field um, to enrich the soil but we enrich the soil using the natural ways. So this is one of the main uh, principles of um, regenerative paddy cultivation and uh, let's um, go ahead in this video we're going to explain you how it's done at Varanashi Organic Farms. As you can see, the green manure has been tilled back into the soil. So the green manure grows for about four months in the summer. Like I mentioned, we have Clericidia growing, Mimosa purica growing, Gale of Wind, and lots of other naturally occurring um, weeds, basically. Uh, they grow over here. So that's, that's great to um, bring up the nutrients in the topsoil. So once they grow, um, we till them back during the, the monsoon. As the first rains hit, we... Uh, and we have an adequate water coming in through the channels. Um, we till uh, the green manure back into the uh, soil. So in here, green manure means basically the weeds which grows in the plant. So they uh, degrade inside the soil and uh, release the nutrients for the paddies, paddy to come up. So as we know, the traditional way of paddy cultivation involves um, flooding of the fields, which means we need a lot of water. Uh, the flooding, the reason why we flood the uh, paddy fields is to stop the weeds from competing with um, a crop. So the uh, paddy fields are flooded. So instead of using pumped water, um, we use, we do the flooding of the plantation on the right season. So when um, the rains hit, when the rains are quite heavy, the flowing water is channelized like this. As you can see, I'm sit standing in one of the channels and um, this channel is opened up into the paddy fields. So the paddy fields are flooded. We control the channels. The channels go through and through uh, the paddy fields. We have about eight fields over here and um, the water channel just goes uh, all around. So we can control the amount of water getting into the field and to pass down to the other field. So we do not use pumped water. So there is no um, energy used during this process. So that way, we reduce the footprints of um, the paddy, cul paddy cultivation. Also, in the summer months, we do not grow paddy. We go into lentils, which needs less water and doesn't need flooding. And we grow vegetables, which also doesn't need flooding. Um, so that way, we do crop rotation as well. And we're not using um, electricity or pumped water for uh, irrigation or flooding of uh, the paddy fields. So as you can see, the, the water channels are cleverly uh, managed so that it goes through all the paddy fields and it has an opening for each paddy um, field. So for example, this channel can go through here and enters this big field. And if that um, fills up and we have excess over there, we can uh, slowly open this up and shift the water from going from there to going over here. So again, this is all naturally done. And once we open that, it goes through here and then comes up here. So now we have opened it up. The water started flowing over here. And all we have to do, there is, again, another management here. 
if we let it through here it will follow to the uh, the fifth parry field but if you don't want it to the fifth one we want it to the fourth one we just place our pipe down here and make sure the the water goes into the pipe over here right so now the water starts getting into the the fourth field as well and when we have enough water on the fourth paddy field and the fifth one as well we just block it back here and let it flow into the bigger paddy field which needs more water and once that's done we close the bund over here and we let it out into the mainstream and finally into the river so that it can water can go out of the farm so once the green manure is still back into the soil and we flood the paddy fields with water and after that we um, inoculate the paddy fields with the composter so the composter has um, seven different types of beneficial microorganisms so it's, it's a starting culture and once it's spread across we let the paddy field um, stay like that for about 14 days where it um, from rots the rots and decrates decays the organic matter which allows the nutrients to see part of the um, organic matter and get into the uh, ground so this is very important uh, to use these biological um, fertilizers with bio fertilizers with biological organisms which helps in the decay of organic matter so the Varanashi composter is an, um, something that we use uh, here in paddy fields about two weeks before the transplantation, um, we take a small part of the paddy field where there is good sunlight falling. We till that and we sow uh, our seeds. So the seeds used here is a Kajay Jaya boiled rice variety, which uh, it's, it's a brown rice. And we love it because it's full of nutrients. The protein percentage is higher in that. And in 14 days, um, the, this, the sapling starts uh, growing up of the, the the rice the paddy saplings and then we um, pick it up from the roots uh, for transplanting so in about 14 days we have uh, the paddy the sown paddy grows to about this size and the stalk is removed along with the roots so it's important that we remove it with the roots and then we transplant using um, the SRI method so SRI method basically involves um, in transplanting with one feet gap between each other so the best way to do it is basically having two poles on either end of the paddy field or with twice and uh, on the strings every one feet apart we put tie small strings so for indicate as indicators and then these two um, this long string is placed on with twice on each end of the um, paddy field tightened and uh, along that string where the indicators are there, uh, farmers plant this stock back into uh, the paddy field. So transplanting is done that way. When we do this, there is enough gap between one stock to the other stock, which um, allows it to grow much better and uh, give a better yield. So basically when we transplant, we make sure that we take two stocks of uh, the, the paddy sapling so the only uh, fertigation that we do is using the green manure which is recycling the um, the plants that grow in summer back into the paddy fields we also bring the or, uh, organic waste from our um, agriculture which is cocoa pods um, it could be cow dung uh, farmyard manure these things are also put in as fertigation we do not use any chemical fertilizers NPK is definitely not used in this farm also, we do not use chemical harmful pesticides. Uh, in, we do have insect problem that's, that happens everywhere. The way we deal with it is through using biopesticides. Uh, there is a local plant here called Kanapati, which is um, poisonous, but it's not a systemic poison like the pesticides. We um, put it in water, we let it ferment in the water for a few days, and after that, we spray that. <clears throat> Um, to the um, either the infected areas or into um, our entire paddy fields which keeps the pests away from paddy so we have good yield at the end of the day without using any um, chemical fertilizers or pesticides 
which keeps the nutrients in the soil, the micronutrients especially, and that comes up in our food. And um, it's poison-free food for everybody. Also, some of the other issues that we um, have, farmers have in the wildlife is uh, we have wild boars coming in and playing around in the fields, which would destroy your crop. For this, we keep put manual fencing. Um, and also what helps is we keep a small section of the farm. We grow um, taro there, which attracts um, the wild boars to that section. So they do not attack the paddy field. So that way we kind of control uh, where they're traveling also through natural ways. So in about three months, uh, the paddy would be ready to harvest. And uh, the harvest is either done through manual or uh, through combined harvester. And this um, harvested paddy is taken to the mill to get the rice. And uh, that rice can be stocked for one or two years um, before it gets consumed fully. He can Most part of the rice is consumed by the farmers around us uh, and the guests who come to the farm. But we also sell 50% uh, of it. Um, although we get a lot less yield in this area compared to the rice bowls, um, we are happy that we get to eat um, poison-free food uh, without using chemical fertilizers or pesticides. And also it's rich in nutrients compared to uh, the conventional, conventionally grown crops.